The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. I'm Andrew Davidson, and welcome back to another As Per My Ability video. Hi guys, welcome back. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. Star Trek fans out there know that Spock's dying words. But I've been thinking about the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few a lot recently, and I'll tell you why. I recently went through Pandemic Legacy Season 2. Now, it wasn't my first time playing through the whole game. It was actually my second time completing the entire uh, season. So Season 2, we were playing. And for reasons that I'm not going to get into, we needed to burn through the entire game in six days. We had six days to play an entire season of a Legacy game. And you know what? We did it. We played 17 games of Pandemic Legacy in six days. Huh, it was a lot. But as we were playing, I started to say that phrase. Because a player would have a certain thing they wanted to do on their turn. On my turn, I'm going to take this card. I'm going to go here. I'm going to do this. I'm going to build this. I'd like to go over here. But by the time it gets to their turn, as those of you that have played Pandemic know, the game screws with you. And by the time it's your turn, I'm sitting there looking at you going, we need you over here. We need you to go do this. We need help here. And that creates conflict within the player because the whole time they're thinking, yes, I'm going to do this. I want to build over here. And now when it's their turn, it's like, no, dude, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. We need help over here. You have to just forego your turn of what you wanted to do and do this. Now, I originally said to this kind of a throwaway comment. It made people laugh or whatnot. But as we played game after game after game, 17 games in six days, it kind of caught on. And all the other players were starting to quote, needs of the many, dude, needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. And it, came, it became an inside joke. Half of the players didn't even know what they were quoting until later on when I did say, well, you know, it's from Star Trek. It's Spock's dying words. But we kept quoting it to each other. And that got me thinking about my game theory background and how it relates to and probably does stem from the volunteer's dilemma. Now, in game theory, the volunteer's dilemma goes something like this. You have a community of 300 houses and all of a sudden the power goes out in all 300 houses. A tree falls, knocks down a power line, does something, and you have all 300 houses in this community, this neighborhood, out of power. Now here's the thing. The power company can easily fix the problem. They can send a service crew out. They can re remove the tree, take care of it, put back up the power line, hook everything back up. Next thing you know, 300 houses, the whole community's back online. The problem is, is the, the power company doesn't know that you guys are out of power. Somebody within the community needs to call the, the uh, power company and say, hey, there's a tree, there's a problem, we're all, out of, we're all out of power, you need to send a service crew. But the problem is, is that whoever calls their account is going to be charged. They're going to be charged a $100, $200 service fee because they're the one that made the call. So everyone's sitting in their homes thinking, someone needs to call the power company to let them know so we can get our power back on. But whoever calls is going to be charged. If I don't call and someone else does, hey, power's back on. No charge to me. Someone else called. If I do call, then I get charged, I pay the $200, my power gets turned back on, but you know what? 299 other houses, their power is all back on for free. I'm the one that paid and they get back on for free. So there's really three types of people when game theory looks at how these scenarios play out. The first is the type A, those are the people that are like, you know what, I have the money, I have the resources, Give me the number. I'll make the call. I don't mind paying $200. 
because I'm paying for my power to come back on. Now, if everyone else's power happens to get turned back on too, good for them, but I don't care. I'm willing to step forward, raise my hand, pick up the phone, and get power back on. Then there's type two, which is kind of wishy-washy to explain. It's basically like passive aggressive, and it goes something like this. I'm willing to pay to put the power back on, but if someone else wants to before me, I mean, I'm fine with that. You can think of maybe at the dinner table when the check comes and it's like, well, I'm willing to pay for the check, but if someone else wants to pay, I'm not really gonna throw up any resistance. Hey, they offered to pay. If no one else offers to pay, I guess I can do it. So it's this passive aggressive, that's type B. Type C is the exact opposite. I am not gonna pay money. I'm gonna sit in my home and wait. Someone else will call. Someone else is gonna be a schmuck and call and get charged. I'm gonna get my power back on, free of charge. It's gonna be awesome. Well, most of you know where this is going by now because the real problem is everyone sitting in their homes, if nobody calls, if everybody adopts that third type, the power company doesn't come. Nobody gets their power turned back on, back on. Everyone's sitting there with their arms folded going, waiting for my power to come on. Someone's got to call. Someone else will call. Someone will take care of it. I'm not getting my account charged. And then you sit there and all 300 houses have no power. So the volunteer's dilemma really is, do I pay the $200 to get my not only my power back on, but I help out all these other people for free. Do I feel altruistic enough to say, all right, fine, it's no big deal, 200 bucks, I'll pay for it, even though 299 other homes are just sitting there like, hey, thanks for the free power, man. The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. In life, sometimes we just need to learn to deal with these situations with the first one. To say, you know what, I have the skills, I have the ability, I have the resources, whether if it be time, money, whatever, and say, I can do this. I can make the call. I can make the sacrifice in order to help not only myself, but other people. That way bad things don't happen to anybody. The power gets turned on for everyone. Now the power example is basically what game theorists have been, have been using for years and years. I did not make up that scenario, full disclosure. But there are other scenarios where sometimes maybe it's not a monetary thing. Maybe it's just a voluntary, like who's got the time to do this to help the church project or the school project or to help like study something or you know doing something for other people but sacrificing your own time. Because my time is usually spent this way in which I get money. But if I do this, I help out a whole bunch of people and myself. But I don't get any money. In life, we need to learn how to be that first person. We need to learn to just volunteer and say, I'm willing to lose. I'm willing to lose some things in order to just help everybody. And so... I'm going to talk about some games because a lot of game theory, like the Volunteer's Dilemma and the Prisoner's Dilemma, which is a completely different video, have these things implemented in some of the games. And so one of the games that I'd like to talk about that implements the uh, Volunteer's Dilemma is a game called Game of Thrones, the board game. Now in Game of Thrones, you are taking on one of the houses of Westeros. For those of you that don't know, the game is based on the very popular book series slash HBO series. It is basically like Risk on steroids. You are attacking each other. You are building up armies. It has a little bit of a diplomacy aspect to it. And I mean diplomacy, the game, not the word. Where you'll be giving, you will be giving orders to... Uh, different groups of armies and building them up and creating support for others and creating allies and backstabbing and taking over their countries and castles and things like that. But at some point the game says, stop, time out. 
Now, for those of you that aren't familiar with Game of Thrones, this is probably going to be over your head, but if you're a fan, you'll know what I'm talking about in a minute. The game pauses and says, the wildlings will attack Westeros. Now, wildlings are these people from the north that attack your board. Everyone. And so you have to time out the game and say, hey, who's willing to spend their resources, their influence or power markers in the game, to stop the wildlings? Well, if everybody says no, the wildlings attack and bad things happen to everybody. All the players have these really bad things. They lose armies, they lose a castle, they lose some of their supply lines, whatever it may be. It's the, the game changes all the time. But if someone steps forward and says, I will, I'll take care of the wildling attack. I will stop that attack. Not because I don't really want anything bad to happen to you. Of course, I want bad things to happen to my, my players in a competitive game. But I don't want bad things to happen to me either. So I can step up and do that. And in Game of Thrones, it offers players that chance, that volunteer's dilemma of, I will pay my power tokens to stop this really bad card from triggering and hitting us all. Because I'm thinking of myself, but in a sense, everyone else gets the benefit as well. The volunteer's dilemma is really just a social experiment. If nobody does anything, nothing you know, nothing's going to change. Bad things are going to happen. If somebody, one person does something, they're going to lose, but at least they prevent things from happening. Now, this is really a social experiment as uh, in society, there's this thing called the bystander effect. Now, I can't quote any names, uh, any faces, any, anything, but I was reading a Wikipedia article about the bystander effect and about the stabbing of a woman in, I wanna say 1964, in the 60s, who was stabbed in Harlem in front of a whole bunch of people and was just killed and nobody did anything. A bunch of people saw it from their porches, from their windows, and nobody called. Nobody stopped because they all thought, someone else will get involved. I'm not getting involved. Someone else will call the police. Someone else will report it. And no one did. And so she was killed and left there and no one reported it. For days her body was there. Nobody reported it because they all thought someone else would report it. And so when we play these games and we kind of learn to be altruistic and think of others... We think of real life, we think of that woman that was killed in the 60s. We think of the bystander effect. People who don't want to get involved. People that don't want to jump out and say, well, I don't want to take the time to call the police because then I have to be interviewed and they got to take my name down and all of this stuff. No, 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 someone else will do it. And life, that can't happen sometimes. And sometimes games can help us get us into that mindset of, Okay, I can do this. Because, as we all know, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. So that's all I wanted to talk about today. Spock, Star Trek, and the Volunteer's Dilemma. Thank you everyone for watching. And as always, I will see you all at the next video.